I am Jack from Collateral. And you're watching Tales from the Power Range. <laughs> Welcome back to Tales from the Power Age, and tonight we are going to be talking about our first in a new series of legendary rock venues, and what better legendary rock venue than the Carton Horses, the Carton Horses in East London, the birthplace of Iron Maiden. So uh, we went there actually a couple of weeks ago, which was absolutely fantastic, and we thought we'd take a few minutes out to review this venue, which was fantastic. So, Gav, if you can show a couple of pictures that uh, that we took outside the venue. So it's been, uh, it looks great, right, with the green tiles on outside. Um, some awesome stuff around the venue, which looks great. It looks great. You can see on the fire exit door, that's absolutely brilliant. And there's also a sort of a painting of that inside on yeah, the ceiling, yeah. which on the ceiling, uh, yeah. looks absolutely awesome. It's basically on a corner, isn't it? So it's a, yeah. it's on a corner pub, like yeah. totally traditional and, and, and brilliant. And, Kind of in the middle of nowhere, really, for London. But yeah, so uh, it is off the beaten. Tra it is off the beaten track for uh, a live venue. I'm not going to lie; most of them are in the West End. So those of you that know London, actually, many of the venues are in central London. There are some that sort of outside of that, Shepherd's Bush Empire, and thinking as one. Uh, as one. Um, and then you've got a couple of venues up in Islington as well, but mainly they're in central London. But uh, so first time at the venue, it's been recently refurbished. Um, and I think uh, we're going to cover that in a couple of minutes because we've got some great pictures of that. What yeah, we've, we've, we've all we... together, so we thought we might as well uh, try and show you around a bit. But first of all, a bit, a bit of an introduction. Yeah, which we'll do now. Right, right. Yes. You're, on. Oh, you're on. You're on. Right, welcome back to Tales from the Power Age. We are live from the Carton Horses in East London, as you can probably see there. Hi guys, how are you doing? All right, good. good. Right, yeah. so tonight we're seeing Collateral, uh, a bunch of other bands as well, so really looking forward to that. This is our first time at the Carton Horses, the birthplace of Iron Maiden, so uh, watch out for that. Birthplace uh, of British Heavy Metal. And the birthplace, the birthplace of the new wave of British Heavy Metal. So, uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to that. Jam, anything you want to say about tonight? It feels it feels a really special. This is a great venue. It's really, really good. I love what they've done with the place. The toilets are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the hell? Um, there's some great artwork in here. And if anyone's passing this side of East London, pop in here for a beer because it's really, really good. It serves great beer, great food, great starters. And it's a really good vibe. It's a really friendly, really great pub. And they put metal on in the room downstairs. Awesome. Yes, don't worry about the food. This is where you come for heavy metal. <laughs> this is going to be a great night. This is the best place to come for it. East London's finest. Yeah, what they said. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, listen, we're going to have a great night. Um, and also a big shout out to yeah. our good mate Leon, yeah. who is also yeah. assisting with tonight. Come on, my man. Have yes. a good night. I tried the food, I tried the beer, and I'm going to start, start putting music. Boom. Right. See you later. Bye. And there you have it. So that was, <laughs> that was Leon helping. So thanks for doing the video and photography uh, on that evening, Lee. And, uh, and actually, he hadn't had a drink, believe it or not. And guess yeah. which one of us hadn't had a drink? Uh, none. We all had a drink. Um, what, I, what I just remembered when you just mentioned that and I just saw myself I don't get out much and I'd had a couple of drinks and it was a great afternoon slash evening and we really had a great time we were in a state uh, we were of refreshment by, weren't you yeah that just reminded me it's not that many venues where you can actually drink we're using a nice glass I, I think yeah, there's some nice drinking it. glasses as well <laughs> where you can actually get a nice glass and you're also allowed to take your glass downstairs to the venue as well actually a glass now, granted, mm. one of us might have accidentally knocked a couple of people's glasses out of their hands and smashed a couple of at, them. At least two. <laughs> but luckily, I had made friends with the lady that knew where the mop and bucket was. And she didn't mind at all any of the times that I did it. She I did. Helping me. Yeah, I bet you did. It's only a tiny bit left in your pint, shut your face. <laughs> anyway, they've got Trooper on sale there by the bucket load. So if you like yeah. Trooper, that's the place to go. They've got brilliant Trooper glasses, uh, which but are also... Ex and it wasn't expensive. You're in London. Oh, I just yeah. mentioned, yeah, five right. ninety yeah. a pint. Under which, six yeah. bit a pint, which for London is amazing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there's, a, there's a couple of pictures of the renovation taking place, which... Uh, you know, but hardly recognise it from what it looks like now. And uh, we, we've got a couple of videos in a minute, which we're which we're going to show you. But the uh, the live venue is now in the basement downstairs, so you've got to go down a few stairs and uh, 
it's great. It's great. It reminds me of the old marquee, the first one actually. Um, well, the they've done it in a really smart way, haven't they? They've yeah. kept the they kept the old tiles and you know yeah, the green tiles are amazing. It. So and good. East End pub, you know, they've kept all that stuff, but and they've really embraced the Iron Maiden history, as you would. You know, why wouldn't you? It's it's brilliant. Yeah. Apparently, the the stage used to be upstairs by the yeah. bar. Um, which the, the band that we saw there, Collateral, have actually played upstairs as well. And it was a, a red hot summer's day. So, but yeah, now it's downstairs and it's a proper legitimate cool venue, you know. And yeah. uh, we we did exactly the right thing. We've spent the day there, you know, enjoying the Atmos of the Maiden pub and all the history of the cart and horses. And then had a metal gig to go to at night, you know. What could and be better? The venue area downstairs. And it was really kitted out. It was really, really well. And it had great sound as well. Because you don't, you know, you go to a basement, you don't know what you're going to get, and you don't. I don't think they, they haven't scrimped on it. They had a really good sound, really good, and the yeah. layout of it was just right. I mean, it's not a massive capacity, but just enough to make it a, vi a decent, viable venue to get some decent rock bands in there. And I've seen who they've got coming up over the next couple of months, um, and they've got some really good bands. They've got mm. some really good nights on there, so well worth checking out. Definitely. Okay, well, let's have a look at the origins of Iron Maiden. Gav, do you want to just talk talk us through that? Yeah, I mean, every Maiden fan knows, you know, there's a couple of real uh, key venues in uh, in London that, that were an important part of them. But I think this was really local to Steve, um, the Carton Horses. And, uh, you know, you don't have to dig very far to see in uh, documentaries or in books how much of an important part the Carton Horses played in the early days. So we're talking mid to late 70s, before it really solidified the proper lineup that we know today. I think there was a... a a new guy every five minutes in Maiden at the time but you know it's really cool to see them actually at the venue and um you know the same place still exists thank god you know imagine if it had closed it'd be a nightmare so this yeah. is a photo of them in the venue with some press clippings and stuff and the guys that were part of the band in 76 yeah uh, and then they they had a re reunion that lineup with Steve as well uh in 19 sorry in 2018 yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. was there except for the drummer apparently so that's really cool but when you um, look back and, and in maiden's history i mean this i made mean a lot to all four of us on here and if you check out any of that with there's several maiden pods and big part in us growing and i know for a lot of the, you guys that are watching this maiden will play a really really big part in your in your metal culture but when you think back to those years they were having to really be at the forefront i mean new wave of british heavy metal no wonder they, they had needed places to play. And that's why the Carton Horse is one of those places that meant they could actually play and suss out what their sound was going to be. Yeah. There was so much punk going on at the time. When you see the picture and the clothes they're wearing, they've all got hair. They've got some amazing tashes going on. Yeah, uh, going so, but it's early doors. This is early doors in our in, in the origins. When you think, you know, when the first, when, when did Maiden's first album come out? Oh, no. Soundhouse was 79 though, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a long road, and this is a few years before that, but they were already, I mean, Steve Harris, they were, they were already out there trying to work out what they wanted to do and how they were going to do it. And when you look at a place like this, the cart and horses, that you had these places that were actually put them on right in the heart of the, of, you know, of, of like Stratford Way. Their right, neighbourhood. The yeah. Territory. It's just immense that it was there. And the fact that they've been out to bring it back now and they yeah. could go in. It's it's it really felt great when we were there, didn't it? And this history is yeah. amazing to get to see. Yeah, it? and the first couple of album covers as well. You can see where they get the inspiration for that from as well. You know, it's yeah, it, absolutely. It looks like that. You know, certainly at night, it's really cool. You know, um, uh, and they're also the fact that the, the great thing about Maiden, and we all love this, is that they're still friends with the old guys. You know, they they have other they invite them onto support slots, and Steve Harris, you know, is as approachable as your neighbour, you know, it's it's such such a nice feeling that they're all still friends and no one's got a bad word to say about anybody, you know, and that's that's what what we we love about Maiden, you know. Yeah, and even those, those roots and origins. I know all of us here have seen um, Steve Harris's British, uh, well, sorry, British Lion. I was say Steve Harris's, but we've all seen British Lion, which has Steve Harris in. I mean, Deal, you've caught them at. Um, did you catch them at the Booking Hall? Well, well, I come at Margate and Dover the year before, but what was interesting, we've all met Steve, and I was talking to uh, a chap called Colin, uh, a new subscriber. So, hi, Colin, hope you're well. Um, he, uh, he was talking, he met Steve, um, who came off the tour bus at the car, so he went to the car gig. 
and he's, cool. he got a bit starstruck and he said to Steve, do you mind, um, do you mind signing my arm? To which of course they did. And he put, and he said, I think he only did it because I had a West Ham top on. And he did the hammers under his, uh, did two hammers under his, uh, under his signature, which of course Collins now tattooed over the top and it's there oh, for brilliant. Him. <laughs> It's classic, but you're right. Steve's really approachable. Um, and, um, uh, and it feels like a really legendary place, despite the fact that it probably looks really different to what it did in the day. Um, exactly. It's those roots, it's those roots that Steve Harris, as as Mr. Mr. Iron Maiden, we've, we've caught him just this year at Crawford, our local independent venue, Crawford Arms in Milton Keynes. And he's playing there in front of, what, 250, I mean, it's a packed house, 250 people. He's still so close to the people that he can be doing these Maiden sellout gigs. There's going to be people watching this that are probably... You know, in South America, that, that he's playing to vast, vast audiences, and yet he's still got the time to put it in, and still, you know, he's still close to grassroots metal. It's brilliant, it, and you can, you could feel it when you when you were here. You could feel it. It's, it's yeah, really love seeing this. Okay, cool. Paul Diano's played there as well, Gav, which I think yeah. uh, you want to just touch on. Yeah, I think um, again, going back to the fact that they're in touch with their roots. You know, he was, I think this was part of a. I think they did a, a, a fundraising album or something. Um, and obviously they're they're selling the merch and things like that so yeah it's really cool that he's he's well enough now to to carry on singing which he hasn't been doing for a long time so i think he's done a south american tour to that point yeah um, so yeah from, from his wheelchair but you know it's great that he's back on the scene and uh, still, right. still got yeah. a great voice as well yeah good excellent well look we, we did a little video um a, a walk around so um this is quite short, but if you haven't been there before, this will give you an idea. So there's the neon outside. And uh, as Gappy's already mentioned, there's lovely green tiles. And as you go in, there's flags on either side, which is quite cool. You've got the Iron Maiden uh, fan club flag on the left, which you're just about to see as you're going in. So that's the fan club moniker there, which is cool. And then on the other side, you've got uh, uh, another flag flying. I can't really see which one that one was. Lots of tourists coming in all afternoon. As you can see, the welcome in the maiden font and uh, lots of welcomes for everyone from all over the world. There's the bar. And as already mentioned, less than five ninety a pint. You can actually buy those beer mats as part of the merch. And all <laughs> the boys are uh, enjoying the drink. And uh, all are wondering what you're doing filming me on a Sunday night. So uh, Hopefully, it gives you a feel and an idea of what the venue is like. There's a few a few other pictures, and Jam, we I know you love those um, those toilets with the trooper and uh, oh, the toilet doors are amazing. Yeah, they're yeah. fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, they're that, it's so iconic. I mean, yeah, I'm so glad that's well, crazy, but it's, yeah, it's really really cool. That's the only thing that if you get a picture in front of that, and then literally people are trying to get in and out of the toilet, and you're like, oh, sorry, mate. I'm just everyone's <laughs> cool. Everyone's like, yeah, it's really brilliant. Let's get a pic. Um, no, it's really cool. And there's a shelf above the pictures with drum skins and all, another layer of memorabilia that you can you can obviously spend your time wandering around and looking at. You know, it's really cool. It's like a non-NAF um, uh, pub. Yeah, it's like a theme pub, but it's not. Yeah. It's a real. It's the real thing. You know, oh, it's definitely not a theme pub. Everything about that place is just really, really cool. It was just They've, so done it. Great. They've done it. They've done it. So well. great to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So the picture on the bottom left is um, I got there a little bit before the rest of the guys. And it was interesting watching different people coming in, Spanish, Italians. There was a Japanese guy came in, took a load of photos, had a pint and then um, bought a pile of merch and then went. So there's lots of merchandise, right. also, which, which, uh, is, which we'll touch on in a few minutes. But the bottom left photo is a picture of my pint. So it's a uh, neck oil, which is uh, a, a beer of choice, which is lovely. Mm. But you can see it's on a barrel and it's just a really nice touch having the Iron Maiden um, Trooper moniker on the top of the yeah. barrel. So, yeah, yeah just brilliant little nice. things like that would just, uh, I think, are really cool and just make you want to stay stay longer. Yeah, so, the staff um, were great, weren't they? Yeah, they were brilliant. Mm. So I think um, we're going to talk about the merch next. Yeah, this is there's tons of merch and it changes frequently from what I can gather. So rather than putting kind of loads of stuff that you can't buy anymore, <laughs> um, there's a couple of things there, but uh, you know, it's to the to the left of the bar when you go in. There's a little area of of merch, but um, look on the website. You know, check the website's pretty good. Um, I, yeah. I'll put a link below. Um, I think you can buy it online as well. 
Um, but definitely, like Jam said, check out the bands they've got coming up. You know, some really decent names and you know, really strong cover bands as well. De keep it alive, you know, give them, give them some love. Yeah. yeah, make a day of it. It's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, we'll, Just we'll want to touch on it again, I'm sure. Touch <laughs> on the food as well. We had some loaded chips and uh, some nachos. Uh, so one of the guys with us was um, vegetarian, so we had a couple of the nachos. But I have to say, the loaded chips were some of the nicest loaded chips I've ever had. They were absolutely amazing. I think it was like a burger they were loaded with, which is brilliant. It's <laughs> right on my street. So, um, so that's a whilst, whilst on. on that subject, I don't know if Gav just covered it, but the staff were really cool. They, were, I, I know I mentioned about, um, yeah, a couple of glasses might have gone on the floor. They were really great. They were. It wasn't like a... So it wasn't like a, your typical London pub. No, they, 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 they knew what was going on, didn't they? They, they, they knew what was local, going to happen. It was like a local pub. The, the yeah. staff were really, That's really true. good, really friendly. And <clears> I mean, you get, you're at the bar. I mean, Struth, I was getting around. I think there was like say, eight, nine, nine of us, I think. And you're like calling them in. And sometimes, you know, London pub, this, like, it, it wasn't like that. It was just, yeah, if you've got one from Matt or Boy there, and it's, it was it's really good. And it makes it a lot more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot different to normally when you're in London and they lower their seven pounds for a pint. No, it's a reasonable pricing and it had proper you know, bar staff and people looking after you, which is really, really kind. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, thank you. So why why would you not go? So on that, oh, that's a lovely segue to, to how do you get there? So if you've never been to the Carton Horses before, <coughs> uh, it's in East London and it is served by um, a main line um, called Stratford. So you can go on the high speed from St Pank you can go on the Jubilee line. Um, you can go all the way through Bermondsey up to... Uh, Lines, yeah. Yeah, or you can go on the central line if you're coming from Essex. So it's easily accessible. It's about a 10-minute walk from Stratford, um, but you'll see advertised on the um, on the website, it's only 50 yards from Maryland. So um, Gaps Jam, do you want to just talk through? Yeah, well, Maryland? yeah. The other option, Gaps, isn't it? Is the district line... It's the district line to Plasto. <laughs> which was the incorrect place to go. <laughs> we did have a nice, we did have a nice long walk down Stratford High Street, all the way from Plasto to Stratford. Well, it's fine. Initially, it was going to be, was it going to be all Gate East, wasn't it? Yeah, all Gate East, yeah, which is like four and a half miles from the venue, <laughs> which, which we, we didn't fancy check. as a walk. No, so I like... double checked. I, I <laughs> double checked on the situation, and it turned out it wasn't the best. wasn't all day east. It ended up that the nearest we could get whilst we were anyway, mile and a half walk we had, which is fine. It was fine taking in the the sights of East London on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> <laughs> and we got to the. But Stratford is literally just around the corner. Stratford Station, yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah it's all the yeah. lines there. So yeah, our journey home was a lot quicker by a couple of very lovely. Uh, chicken shops that they had there, which were right. very, very yeah. good. Um, but no, really easy to get in and out of. You can actually see Westfield from the pub, so you can look out yeah. the window and you can see it. So um, if you go, I definitely recommend going there that way. Also, might be worth just noting that it is very close to West Ham, um, the West Ham's ground at the uh, London Stadium, as it's called now, not the Olympic Stadium. Yeah. And uh, if you go on uh, match day, you might struggle to get in because it's apparently absolutely rammed on match days and a very popular venue pre West Ham. So, um, yeah, interesting. So, look, definitely recommend it. Like the guys have said, definitely check out the live venue, check out the live gigs, give them some support. And, um, yeah, I think that's all we've got from the Carton Horses. So, hopefully, you enjoyed yeah. that. Um, that we've got a couple of videos from Collateral on the night that we were there. So check those out on our live channel. There's lots of other stuff on the live channel as well. I think we've got over 70 videos on there now. So um, we always try to take one and two, one or two vids when we go to a gig and we get those shared out. So please uh, give that a subscribe as well. And as always, uh, you can contact us on www.healthsonparry.com. You can check us out on Facebook. You can have a chat with us on Twitter at TTFTPR. I say that because it bears no relation to us at all. I don't know how we ended up with that moniker or that. Uh... But it's brilliant. Yeah, it's cool though, right? And uh, if you want a badge, go on to Redbubble and you can buy one. So, uh, or. And t-shirts want... and hats. Yeah, and everything else. Phones and phone uh, cases. Why do you want to buy cart and horses stuff when you can buy tails from a picnic, right? So there you go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. If you go in there, go and have a great time. Enjoy it. And we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.